DeMar DeRozan and the Chicago Bulls just lost a game to the Atlanta Hawks at State Farm Arena about 10 days ago by one. Could they right their wrongs against Trey Young and company? In this one, Young had different things on his mind. He was different. Early on in this one, three three-pointers in the first quarter. Young had himself a first half. More on him in a second, but first things first. DeMar DeRozan going to work. Not once, make it twice. Mid-range jump shot looking splendid. The Bulls take a 16-point lead. But here comes Trey, cold as ice. A 29-point first half for Trey Young. Single-handedly keeping Atlanta in his basketball game. Third quarter. Oh, you're going to leave him wide open? A little shimmy shake? Got to make it after the shimmy. Young finished with 34 points. Actually thought he would have went for 50 the way he got up to a, such a great start in the first half. Young with the dish inside to Omeka Okongu who finishes at the rim. Good cut. DeJounte Murray is going to give the Hawks a one-point lead in the fourth. Back and forth we go down the stretch in this one. DeMar DeRozan pulling up and connecting. He led Chicago in scoring with 28. Zach Levine, jump shot. It's going to give the Bulls a two-point lead with 42 seconds to go. Young inside again to a Congo for a finish. Young's the only guy in the league averaging at least 25 points and at least 10 assists. With the game on the line, it's DeRozan again putting the Bulls up by Deuce. Here comes Atlanta, six seconds to go. Young again to a Congo. That's a theme in this highlight. We're tied at 108 with four seconds to go. Chicago goes back to DeRozan, usually a good choice. Here, no. But at the buzzer, it's Ayo DeSumo just getting that ball on the backboard before time expires and the Bulls walk it off in Atlanta. How about that? They lost by one 10 days ago. They win by two, 110-108. A thriller in the ATL. This time it favors the Shy. Before the great content with Hoops Ferro continues, please make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel at Hoops Ferro. Our goal is 100,000 subscribers ASAP. Your subscription takes this platform to the next level. Subscribe now. Oh boy, Chris Haynes recently did an article with Bleacher Report. And in the article, he reported that Trey Young could be the next star to be traded here. Now you got to watch Chris because. My thing with Chris is the teams that he's really plugged in with, he's really plugged in with. Everybody else, he's, he's pretty casual for a reporter's you know, a standpoint. Anything Portland, by the way, trust Chris Haynes about it. He knows his Portland stuff. But he's saying that Atlanta could be the next team to pull the trigger on a star player because Trey Young might demand a trade out. We obviously know there was a little bit of turmoil between Trey and Nate McMillan a few weeks back. But is it enough to really give up on your team star player. Trey's been the face of the Atlanta Hawks since he got to Atlanta. I go to a lot of Hawks games. So trust and believe if you trade Trey Young, you are changing the culture of Atlanta. You're pretty much giving the ball to DeJounte Murray figuratively and literally to be the new face of the organization. I think that's a bit much. Now, here's the thing. John Collins has been available for trade by Atlanta for two years in a row now. Typically speaking, in NBA terms, if a guy's available two years in a row and the team underachieves, he's going to get traded. John Collins is going to get traded, if not by the deadline. He's, he's going to get traded by this offseason. That I know. You know, And I like John Collins. I had the pleasure of meeting and interviewing John Collins one-on-one, -on -one, and I actually like John a lot. I think his personality is, seems like a really good guy. But the reality is, if your name's in the, in the rumors for trades two years in a row, you're going to get traded. And, I, and I'll be honest with y'all. I don't mind telling y'all what, what I've heard. So somebody that's close enough to the Atlanta Hawks organization relayed the message to me that some of the Atlanta Hawks issues over the last few years are women related. I'll leave it at that. I ain't going any further than that. But I, I, I have been told in the past that there have been some issues about some ladies involved. I'm not going to put anybody out on blast. I didn't say anybody's name. 
but that's what I heard in, in, in the last couple of years, right? I think John's going to get traded. You can't trade DeJounte Murray. You just invested all of this draft capital and these assets to get him. You kind of stuck like Chuck with DeJounte for Landry Fields, who's still fairly new in that front office in Atlanta. He can't trade DeJounte unless he's going to flip DeJounte for more uh, you know, more more picks and 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 just more assets than what Atlanta had to give up to get him. You really can't trade Dejounte, and I don't. I'm not saying that Atlanta will want to trade Dejounte. He showed a promise in future. He's been injured as of late. I'm just saying, like, if you're trying to make a big move, I don't think you could make that move around Dejounte. Personally, I don't believe you should make that move around Trey. I'm a big Trey Young guy. A lot of my peers, a lot of my friends, they don't like. They don't care for Trey. They, do, they are not Trey Young guys. I like Trey Young's play. Is he a little cocky, a little arrogant with it? Yes, but I like my basketball players with, with some flavor. Now, I don't know Trey. I've never met Trey. How does that translate in, as a person, as a teammate? Not in the locker room. I don't know. He's a little arrogant on the court. If he's got that same persona in the locker room with his teammates, maybe it could get a, a little bit obnoxious. I don't know. But on the court, I really like Trey's game. I mean, he's leading the league in assists pretty much. Um, and, and, and to me, doing it the right way. I think the, the way he's getting guys involved, it's not those Russell Westbrook assists when he was in OKC, which was literally, I'm passing it to you because I have no other options with the basketball. Trey's going out of his way to find teammates, especially a Congo, which is why I do believe the Hawks are going to move off of Collins. A Congo's giving you about 60% of the production that John Collins is giving you. You're paying John Collins a lot of money. You're not paying a Congo much of anything. You're going to probably trade John Collins. Like, it's just the reality of the NBA. You're not going to pay a guy like a, uh, Collins all that money when you can get pretty much most of that. He's not as explosive as Collins, but they're not really going to that part of Collins' game anymore, right? He's not really doing the explosive dunks that he used to do in Atlanta. So you might as well move on from Collins and get that big salary off the books, especially with you now paying DeJounte and, you know, paying Trey Young as well. I think you'd be better suited to keep a guy like Clint Capella. If nothing else, you can use his big, strong body to guard Giannis. He's better than pretty much anything else you put on the court until a Congo's there as a defender. I'm pretty confident the Atlanta Hawks are going to, I believe, they're going to move off of Collins first, give it some time with Ice Trey, even if he does demand a trade out. I believe they're going to play the waiting game and see if they can bring back pieces that better fit around Trey. But if, if Chris Haynes is right, which he's a phenomenal reporter, and Ice Trey is the next to demand out, boy, does that make the next 10, 12 months as a Hawk fan really interesting. So good luck, Hawk fans. Y'all going to need it. I'm out.